assistant professor uh, EC department Ajay Kumar College. Today I am going to start with the next uh, lecture that is uh, for the subject that is data communication networks KEC 063 and the topic of today's lecture is frame relay and ATM. Then uh, these are the contents of my lecture frame relay we will see and we will see ATM in detail it is uh, frame structure and the data that is related to frame relay and ATM. Now, what is frame relay? So, frame relay with the increasing demand of the bandwidth with the increasing demand of number of users, uh, the type of new WAN that is the wide area network. This is basically known as wide area network. So, with this increasing a new van has been introduced in late 1980s and early 1990s. So, frame relay is basically it is a virtual connected wide area network that was designed in response for a new type of van in the late 1980s and early 1990s. So, basically it is a kind of virtual circuit. So, what do you mean by virtual circuit? Virtual circuit is basically uh, it is known as something uh, a network that is created virtually means it is not fixed. If uh, let us say uh, it there is a network let us say this one uh, is a network this is node 1, this is node 2 this is node 3 and this is node 4. So, 4 computers are connected in a network or you can say 4 nodes are there which will form up a network and in case of virtually virtual network let us say this is the transmitter and this is a receiver. So, there are basically 3 to 4 paths are there which is been uh, uh, possible between transmitter and receiver. Let us say this is path 1, this is path 2nd this is path third and this one is fourth and this one is fifth. So, basically five different paths are available to reach from this transmitter to this receiver. So, what we will do we will uh, see that first thing we have to consider that uh, about the time uh, that depends upon directly proportional to the path length. Let us say there is a direct line of sight exist between this transmitter and this receiver. So, the path length is basically it is very less. So, this type of uh, path is to be followed very uh, accurately and also there is also a path like fr from this to this where, uh, where two intermediate nodes are there between the transmitter and receiver. So, in that case the path length is quite large uh, and definitely it will going to take some time to reach to the destination to the receiver side. So, this is the concept of network. Now, what is virtual circuit? Virtual circuit is basically this is on the demand basis like uh, I have selected this path from here to here this path I have selected. So, this network will be created for the time uh, during which the transmitter will uh, transmit the information to this receiver. It will not going to wait for this node or any intermediate node. So, that is the concept of this intermediate node that is the virtual circuit concept and with this uh, from the previous LAN van which has been uh, presented uh, it has with the demand this frame relay is proposed or it, it is designed in late 1980s and early 1990s. Now, this is the whole structure of the frame relay. Now, you can see in this diagram that there is a LAN which is connected and this uh, follows the bus topology. This follows the bus topology along with that this is to the rest of the internet. Now, this can be a LAN, this can be a WAN or any other network that is being formed. Now, this LAN is connected to this wide area network and uh, through this wide area network an intermediate uh, switch is required you can say or connecting device is required. So, we have used a router. So, the, a router has been used to route the data which has been uh, transferred from this place to this place. Now, you can see over here that there are crossbar switches are used. Now, these are basically crossbar why this crossbar switch is due to its you can see 
this is basically the crossbar switch due to its structure you can see over here that crossbar switches are there which will be connected on the demand basis like uh, uh, this path has been selected. So, these crossbar switches will be connected for the time uh, when this transmitter will going to transmit the data to the time it will be received by the receiver. So, that is the case for cross crossbar switches. So, this is all ca kind of uh, van network and also it is a kind of virtual circuit van network where the data has been connected of uh, the path has been connected uh, using the crossbar switches on the demand basis only. Now, next is the frame layers. Now, you can see that of from the OSI model, the first two layers are the physical layer and the data link layer. Now, these two layers are responsible for the generation for the transmission of the data that is the ANSI standards and second one is uh, which has been responsible for the physical layer uh, uh, data operation and then data link layer that is uh, been used for simplified core functions of the data link layer. So, in case of this data link layer, this will basically uh, used to transfer the information. Uh, uh, only the core functions, the simplified core functions are responsible uh, for this case for the purpose of transmission uh, using this data link layer and this physical layer will going to transfer this ENSI standards. Now, this is uh, the frame format that has been used for the frame relay concept. Now, you can see over here that a flag has been inserted uh, before the starting of the frame and at the ending of the frame there is a flag also. So, basically two flags are there one will going to decide that from where the frame has been started and other will going to decide that where the particular frame has ended. Now, the second one is the address information. Now, you can calculate from here only that how much bits are required to transmit this address information. There are multiple fields are there. The full form is written over here like C by R. C by R is nothing. It is the command or response. So, command or response means if it is 1, then the it is a this particular frame will act as a command and if it is 0, then this will act as a response which will be from receiver to the transmitter. So, basically command is being transmitted from the transmitter to receiver and the response will be sent from the receiver to transmitter. Now, next one is E A. E A is nothing, it is the extended address. Extended address means if any information, additional information you want to transmit between the transmitter and receiver. In that case, this extended address will be added, it will be sent. Then information uh, data will be transmitted, information means the data, the actual data which has to be transmitted between the transmitter and receiver. So, that will is consisting of information. Now, next one is FCS, FCS is nothing, it is frame check sequence. Now, in case of frame check sequence, what does it mean? In case of this FCS frame check sequence, the data which has to be transmitted, it is received at the receiver side. Now, that particular data will be checked that whether it is correct or not uh, using different types of code like linear block codes, uh, convolution codes, uh, what, uh, Viterbi, uh, Viterbi algorithm or any uh, convolution code, cyclic codes are there, cyclic redundancy check. So, different types of codes are available to check whether uh, the received data is affected with any uh, noise or not. Then there is a flag that will going to decide that yes, this is the ending of this particular frame format. Now, next is DLCI. What is DLCI? DLCI is nothing, it is the data link connection identifier that at uh, in the OSI model at the data link layer, there is a connection identifier which has to be uh, inserted in this frame. This will going to identify that yes, the whether the connection that has been set up between the transmitter and receiver it is correct or not. So, that is the concept of DLCI. Now, next one is FECN, FECN is the forward explicit congestion notification and BECN it is the backward explicit congestion notification. Now, what is congestion? Congestion is nothing in uh, uh, if we are talking in terms of uh, uh, network. 
and network theory congestion means traffic means number of bits that has been transmitted that will going to travel over the channel so that is known as the uh, congestion congestion means traffic jam you can say uh, means number of bits that has been transmitted so there uh, if multiple users are using the same channel then uh, the data from the uh, multiple users will going to collide with each other means uh, they will going to uh, access the channel at the same point of time so this leads through leads to congestion so bec uh, fecn and uh, this becn will going to basically decide that whether it is uh, con uh, there is congestion or not then there will be de de is basically the discard eligibility uh, whether you want to discard this particular received uh, frame format if it is having an error and that error cannot be removed then this uh, particular frame can be removed also discarded then ea ea is nothing it is the uh, it is the additional information that you can transmit uh, using this uh, particular frame format so this is the frame format that has been used for the frame relay concept now frame relay does not provide flow or error control they must be provided by the upper layer protocol so basically what is frame relay in case of frame relay whatever data that has to be transmitted it does not provide any kind of uh, flow or error control so they must be provided by the upper layer protocols means upper layer protocols the data has to be transmitted and this particular uh, will be followed by the frame relay format so that that is the concept of frame relay protocol now next is address format so there are basically different types of address formats are there like first one is the 2 byte address 2 byte address means it is of 16 bits and also in this 16 bits 10 bits are there for dlci so 5 bits are used for this one 5 bits are used for this one and the remaining 6 bits are used for this forward explicit uh, congestion notification backward explicit congestion notification command and response then discard eligibility and ea if it is 0 if it is 1 so this is, is known as for the uh, 2 byte of information now next one is the 3 bytes of address 3 bytes is basically you can multiply with because 1 byte consists of 8 bits so these number of bits are required and out of which 16 bits are used for dlci this one this one and this one so these basically 3 are going to decide the number of bits that has been used for dlci then fecn are used becn are used fecn is forward uh, explicit uh, congestion notification backward explicit congestion notification these bits are there and this is basically set as 0 so every time uh, this frame 3 byte address has been considered this byte is fixed that is equals to uh, 0 now next one is third one is the 4 byte address that uh, you can calculate over here like number of bits now in this 23 bits has been used for the dlci operation so if, uh, among this 23 bits are used for dlci operation and uh, the remaining bits you can see over here that this bit is again fixed as 0 so in case of this 4 byte of address this bit is fixed as 0 so this uh, this is the address formats for 2 byte of address 3 byte of address and 4 byte of address and all three cases are been uh, used for the frame relay frame format so that is the uh, structure of address format now next is frad now what is frad frad is nothing it is uh, the frame check sequence uh, that is the frame relay address uh, format is there now what is frad you can see over here that there are different applications which are being used over here like x.25 so earlier in my lecture i have discussed about ieee 802.11 standard now in case of this ieee 802.11 standard that uh, that is basically going to describe the it uh, the bluetooth uh, the Bluetooth concept now Bluetooth is nothing it is the wireless uh, connection that has been set up between the transmitter and receiver now in case of this Bluetooth it uh, first thing that you have to consider while collecting the de connecting the device through Bluetooth that it will going to serve at a specific radius only 
maximum range of the, uh, that Bluetooth will be 100 meters. So, uh, in that there is a application layer are there in the OSI model and in that application layer one of the application is the uh, x.25 application, next one is the ATM, third one is the ATM full form is asynchronous transfer mode, we will see in uh, later in this lecture. What is ATM? ATM is nothing, it is the asynchronous transfer mode. Now, next one is the PPP that is the point to point protocol. In case of point to point protocol, if we will see what is PPP, whenever we want to transmit the data from one point to another point, then uh, it may be possible that there is no line of sight is there between uh, line of sight is there between the transmitter and receiver and in some cases there may be line of sight uh, exist between the transmitter and receiver so that is the point to point protocol there is one transmitter and only one receiver are there to connect the two devices between the transmitter and receiver and using that we will going to transmit the data so that is the point to point protocol transmission. Now, you can see now these uh, FRED that is a kind of MUX only that uh, will be 2 to the power n is to 1 means many to 1 uh, it will act as a switch like any other application which can be executed through this uh, frame format also that can be done uh, using this uh, FRAD and that is at the input side and any of the application can be selected using this uh, frame form uh, FRAD and it will be transmitted or it can be executed using these crossbar switches. So, these are nothing, these are again the crossbar switches. So, these are nothing, these are the crossbar switches that has been connected depending on the uh, network that has to be set up between the transmitter and receiver. So, these are the virtual uh, connected, virtually connected uh, networks that has been connected between the transmitter and receiver. At the receiver side also there is a FRAD and there are different uh, applications which are running over here that is x.25 then ATM is there and other triple P. Now, ATM is again that is the asynchronous transfer mode uh, means asynchronous basically means whenever we are transmit, uh, transferring the data between the transmitter and receiver that is asynchronous is na in nature, which means there is no synchronization is required between the transmitter and receiver. It can be transmitted at any point of time and the uh, receiver which is using the particular kind of uh, uh, carrier signal for the demodulation purpose that is not always same as that at the transmitter side. So, that is the ATM concept. Then again there is a PPP and x.25. So, this is the FRAD you can say that how these uh, this will act as a MUX and this will act as a DMUX that is the opposite part of MUX which has one input and more than one outputs are there. So, that is the concept of uh, FRAD. Now, next is ATM. ATM is asynchronous transfer mode is the self relay protocol designed by the ATM forum and uh, adopted by the ITUT that is the International Telecommunication Union ITUT. So, uh, it has been designed by ATM forum and it has been adopted by the ITUNT. So, what is the basic uh, operation behind the ATM? As you can see over here that there is first user and this is the second user. So, this is first user, this is second user. So, two users are connected to a MUX which is many to one more than one users can also be connected to this MUX uh, also. This is not specific for only two users. Now, you can see over here that the data that has to be transmitted over the channel. This is the channel it has to be transmitted over the channel and this much data has been there which is uh, the length is quite high and you can see over here that in the second user have the fragments of data your segments of data you can say like this is the first segment this is the second segment and this is the third segment. So, three segments are there which is denoted by the A, B and C. So, three segments are there which will going to decide that which particular uh, message bit has to be transmitted. Now, you can see over here whenever that this type of data has to be transmitted over the channel, then this 
a part will be uh, first this first user the data will be transmitted then after that this a will be transmitted and uh, again it will going to wait that whether uh, this first user is having any kind of data or not then this b part will be transmitted then again a then c part so this is how the data will be transmitted in case of the atm means uh, in case of fragments like the second user is having a particular frame format then it will be transferred over here now, next is multiplexing using cells. Now, in case of multiplexing using cells, you can see over here that this diagram is same as the previous diagram, but you can see over here that there are three different segments for the first user and three different segments are uh, there for the second user, which will going to be uh, merged at the you can say added and which can be transmitted over the channel, uh, which is common, which is at the output of this MUX. Now, how this data will be transferred like the first frame will be transmitted x, then the second user transmitter uh, like this one for the first user this one for the from the second user this one from the first user again second user then first user and second user so you can see over here like you cannot directly transmit these three packets or segments in a row you have to transmit with the third uh, combined with the second user also let's say there is a case where third uh, user is also connected and i am taking as r s T. So, three packets are again there for the third user. So, how this will be formed? Like first x will be transmitted, then a, then r that is for the third user, then y, b, s, then z, c, t. So, this is for the first user, this is for the second one, this is for the third one again. First, second, third again. First, second third so this is how the frame will be formed like for every user the particular uh, packet has to be transmitted now next is atm mux what does it mean in case of this atm mux uh, earlier cases were the general form of the atm uh, general form of the mux in case of this atm mux you can see over here that this particular area is vacant so in case of atm what uh, we have to do we have to transmit this a 1, then we have to jump at this point, then a 1, a 2, b 1, c 2, a 3, b 2, c 3. So, this area is not uh, transmitted as a vacant uh, place, it has to be uh, data has to be inserted between this and a continuous form of data transmission is there. Like if somehow uh, I have inserted any vacant packet between the two packets. Uh, which is having the data, then the synchronization between the transmitter and receiver may break. Uh, receiver can uh, see that yes, the particular uh, transmitter has stopped transmitting the data. So, there is a case we have to consider that uh, any vacant uh, packet has not been uh, should not be transmitted. Now, next is ATM. So, you can see in this diagram that there are various uh, interfaces are designed over here this is user network interface like these are the different users and these are connected to a network. So, the interface between the different users this is user number 1, user number 2, user number 3, user number 4 the uh, interface between the users and the network this is the whole network uh, which has been set up. So, this is the interface and this is the network network interface means inside the network when there is an interface which has been established between the two crossbar switches in that case that is known as the network network interface again this is first user this is second user so these are basically the end points where the users are connected to a network and inside a network there are different crossbar switches and these crossbar switches are basically connected in a virtual uh, circuited format means on the demand base basis whenever we require to transmit to follow a particular path like this path i have to follow so these crossbar switches are connected and no need to connect this crossbar switch so this is on the demand basis so, that is why its name is virtual circuit. Now, next is the TP, VP and VC. What does it mean? This is the transmission protocol. This all basically lies on the physical layer. 
So, this is the transmission protocol denoted by the T p, this is virtual path and this is virtual connection. So, in case of this ATM, there is basically three different ty uh, types of uh, connections are there that is the virtual connection that will basically going to signify the individual users. These are the virtual paths. Now, you can see that more than one virtual connection is connected to one uh, more than one VC is connected to one VP and more than one VP is connected to TP. So, TP is nothing it is the transmission protocol that is the uh, wire that has been set up between the transmission and receiver. So, it basically lies on the physical layer. So, this diagram is related to ATM only. Now, these are the ATM headers and uh, this is specifically for the user network interface and this is basically for the network network interface cell. Now, you can see over here like what is GFC? GFC is nothing, it is the generic flow control. GFC VPI is nothing, it is the virtual path identifier. Now, this is virtual circuit identifier. So, this is VPI and VCI, this is the generic flow control which has been written over here. So, these are the basically header information that has been added this base uh, format has been used for the user network interface and this format has been used for the network network interface. So, this is the ATM headers uh, frame format. So, these are the references that you can consider for uh, the frame relay and the ATM. In frame relay, we have seen the different frame formats, its uh, identification. In case of ATM, we have seen the header uh, part, then VPVC and uh, TP. So, these are the uh, this is a summary of the today's lecture. Thank you.